the fact that you spend most of your life in Ife, which is south southwest of Nigeria. Um, looking back on your growing up and right now, what would you say um, has changed? What are the disparities? Well, Ife of those days was a pot puree of different Nigerians from different parts of Nigeria, we converged in Ife. Ife was very similar to what we have in Lagos today. My father originally migrated from the old Midwest to Ife. My father came from present day Edo State, from a village called the Ewe. Ewe is in the Owan East local government today in Edo State. How he decided to go to Ife? A lot of People at that time, uh, young, adventurous people used to go to different parts of Nigeria just to eke a living. They wanted to survive. And my father worked with the public works department, what we call PWD, uh, or otherwise called Hong Kong Wahala. They, they, they were road overseers. They built the roads. They restored the roads. They did general, you know, overhaul of the infrastructure at the time and they were very effective you didn't need big contractors you didn't need a uh, julius badger or anybody at that time they were able to fix everything and uh, so he rose to become a road overseer so a lot of them we had a lot of Igbo people in Ife. for example one of the leading pastors in my church i went to an Aladura church uh was a man i will never forget he was an Igbo man and his son was named bamidele we called him about fine face and he had a son called Bamidele. You can imagine an Igbo man who named his son Bamidele. And during the war... Was during, after you? Do, no, I'm sure the, the son was older than me. During the war, he had to move back home to Biafra land. And uh, you won't believe it. He left all his things in our care. He gave to different friends. And he came back after the war. Everything was intact. Nobody touched anything. Nobody said because he was an Igbo man, oh, let's confiscate his property, let's do this or that, you know. So, Ilefe in those days was bubbling with unity. We were united. We saw ourselves as one. We have Sabo. Uh, my father used to have a restaurant just across the street from Sabo. Sabo was where the Ausa We didn't know of Fulani then. It was everybody was Ausa once you were a northerner. And they were there, and we all lived in peace. People married from different places. My grandparents were Muslims. My parents were Christians. It didn't matter to anybody. So I don't know where these characters came from who suddenly felt the unity and peace of Nigeria after the war could be toyed with to the extent that everybody I know today Except maybe those who are benefiting from the system in Nigeria. Everybody wants to get out of this union. And I believe that is why you formed your organization. I don't have any problem with you. But I can tell you that what you have is an uphill task. <laughs> I do like the challenge. Um, perhaps I should uh, interject here and explain what the organization is about. So the Unity Project is all about promoting ethnic and religious harmony in Nigeria. And we believe that there is problems with the so-called unity that exists today, and we're looking for solutions. So we are opening up dialogues and opening up conversations across the nation, and we want to know what the problems are and how we can fix it. So we're not saying, oh, one Nigeria as it is. No. Uh, nobody has the capacity to do that. We cannot impose that. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to get to that. We're, we're going to get to that point. Okay, my first question, sir. The pertinent question, Nigeria's unity, is it a possibility or is it a myth? Is it something that we can achieve, or is it something that's a tall dream? Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. But a situation where some people want to turn their fellow citizens into third-class citizens, 
you cannot have a unity. The word unity itself comes from friction, conflict. When A and B are in conflict, A and B must agree on certain principles, conditions, conditionalities, configuration, and so on and so forth for you to have unity. But a situation where party A believes that it does not owe party B any explanation. A situation where party A views party B as its perpetual slave. You can never have unity. So unless a miracle happens and you have someone, whether it's Buhari or it's surrogates or whatever they are, and suddenly a miracle happens and they have a change of heart. It's no longer a change of mind. It has moved beyond their mind now. Their mind is made up already that Nigeria belongs to a certain class and category of people. So the, 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 you now have to go to their hearts. If something happens and they have a change of heart about Nigeria, and about how they view fellow Nigerians, there will never be unity. And I can tell you, it is getting worse by the day. Each time we try to appeal to the conscience of our current leaders and tell them that the best legacy you can leave behind in Nigeria is to unite the people of Nigeria. The more they come back with acts of provocation. What is causing the tension today is the fact that our leaders are deliberately provoking some parts of Nigeria. And that cannot continue forever. I always tell people that no nation has ever lived perpetually in stupidity and backwardness. And Nigeria is not going to be an exception. They will try. Yeah. They will use the military, use the security apparatus, use everything at their disposal to suppress the will of the people. But I can tell you, it may not be in our own lifetime, it may be whenever, but I know that a day will come when the history of Nigeria will be written. And we all look back and say, so what happened? How did we achieve this? Once upon a time, there was a division in Germany where you had even a wall between... West Germany and East Germany. But today, who knows the difference? So, it will happen. Even the wall of Jericho, we read it in the Bible. It was so formidable that the Israelites had to go around it. I don't know whether it was metaphorical or it was physical. But we heard that the wall collapsed. So, the wall of Jericho in Nigeria will definitely collapse. I have no doubt about that. You see, the people who govern us lack a sense of history. If you are not properly educated about who you are, you will think you are God. When God has been kind to you, you begin to see yourself. Look at all the leaders, even as young as you are. How many Nigerian leaders have you witnessed, Jennifer? I'm sure you've, you know of Babangida. You will know of Absalami Abubakar. You will know of Obasanjo. You will know of Umaru Musa Yaradua. You will know of Jonathan, and of course, you know of Buhari. So tell me, all the people who governed before Buhari, where are they today? Do they still have the same power they wielded just a few years ago? So why is anybody wasting his time thinking you can just put the robes around the necks of Nigerians and you just lead them to slaughter. It, it doesn't make sense to me. And as someone who had been a supporter of Buhari, I am thoroughly embarrassed, thoroughly, thoroughly embarrassed that we could find ourselves at this level. It is such an unforgivable and unfortunate situation that we, find, we have found ourselves so those of you who are preaching unity, I, I wish you the best of luck. But the best people to preach to is not people like me, because I don't have any problem with other Nigerians. 
It is those Nigerians who have problems with their fellow Nigerians that should go and talk to. And you should start with your leaders, with the president and everything. But if you are talking to us, it's like what Fabella used to say. It means you are clapping with your with one hand, you are hiding behind one finger, and it will never fly. <laughs> I'm not preaching to you, sir. The purpose of the interview, the purpose of the conference, is to understand the conflict. You already put in words what we're about. Unity comes from uh, maybe a group of people who have come together in compromise. And in our research and what we've um, referenced from people we've interviewed, they have said um, the marriage of Nigeria today was forced upon us by the British. And it is not favorable to all the ethnic groups. So certain groups are marginalized and certain groups are um, in charge. And so we're looking for a way to resolve this conflict and have everybody together on the same page. That's what we're about. So the conference which we're having on the 18th is to ask um, Nigerians their own opinions. Because while people like you are vocal, there are other people who are just grumbling on the knee. Perhaps our voices are not heard enough. Um, I'd like to reference one of our previous interviewees. He said that Nigerians are very tolerant people. And the fact is, whatever government has done, um, people keep tolerating and they keep tolerating and they keep tolerating and nobody is speaking out. And so we're here to understand what the problems are and how we can resolve it. That's what our organization is about. We're not insisting we should continue the way we are. We're saying we want to understand the problem and we want to help. Jennifer. That's what we're about, sir. Jennifer. A Nigerian kid who was born five, six years ago already knows the problems of Nigeria. To say you want to understand the problems of Nigeria, I disagree. We all know the problems. It's the solution. And the solution is that each and every one of us must make a conscious effort and sacrifice. In fact, the key word is sacrifice. Anybody, and I've said this repeatedly, any leader, a president of a country as big, as complex, and complicated as Nigeria, who wants to represent the interests of his place of birth, cannot succeed. A, a president is supposed to be for everybody. If you want to represent your area, then you must be an emir, a chief, a warlord, a bandit like you have it all over the world where people fight they fight for the rights of their own people but in a union everybody must agree to sit together a president cannot tell exactly. me a, a president you cannot say you don't know the problem of nigeria before our very eyes there are bandits in nigeria and you have a leadership that knows the whereabouts of these bandits and they are untouchable. And then you now go after those who have not carried any weapon against their country. But just for talking, you go after them. Just for saying, if this thing persists, we will react and retaliate. You go after them. You will get the police to go after them. And the same police and military will not go after those who have already committed acts of treason. You can't do that and tell me you don't know the problems of Nigeria. Those who are calling for restructuring, they are the grammarians. There are people who are no longer interested in restructuring. That what are you restructuring? Who will do the restructuring? Who will even agree to the restructuring? But let me tell you, the sad part is that those who are mostly affected now, I didn't mind. You see, let me tell you, if the North decides that they, are, they want Sharia law, I have no problem with it. As long as you are not going to come to my state and compel me to follow Sharia when there is no Sharia in my constitution. These are some of the issues that we have. If you like, you can say you don't mind if there are bandits in Zamfara. <laughs> I'm not from Zamfara. Do you understand? But if you export... Eats from Zamfara, 
and you are going southwards, and you are saying the people of the south have no right to cry out and put a stop to it, then something is wrong. That is the problem we have. That look, if it is convenient for you for bandits to operate unrestrained and unabated, that's your business. But you cannot say that someone will come to my farmland, I planted my maize, planted my yam, and you just bring cows and they roam majestically on my farmland, and you tell me I have no right to complain. And so, what manner of leader are you? So, that is the problem. I don't have anything personal against anybody. I have a lot of fantastic, full and friends, well educated, very urbane, very cultured. But the opposite, They've allowed the opposite. Those who are not educated, those who don't contribute anything meaningful, they don't pay anything, nothing to the state. And a lot of them are even acknowledged as foreigners. You allow them to roam freely and you don't do anything about them. And then you have a Sunday boo in Ibadan who is saying, no, I'm not going to sit down, arms akimbo, and watch some people, foreigners, invaders, whatever you want to call them then come to my farmland and destroy everything and you tell me I have no right. How do you talk about unity to me? That is the problem. Thank you, sir. Um, I like to um, express a view which is that for us to fully understand all the problems, we need all the parties at the table. So we have part of the parties speaking out and the other parts are saying consenting things. And I do hope that you will participate on the 18th and get to listen to some of the views. Okay. Um, one of the questions I want who, to ask... Who are the people sitting um, down? Jennifer, who are the... Who, I, I didn't get that. Who are the people sitting down? Who are the parties sitting down to talk? Uh, how, did you, how did you choose them? How did you select um, them? The parties that we, we have, um, ordinary Nigerians, we also have... Um, various leaders of uh, organizations that want this uh, Nigerian divide. And we want to understand how we will do this. Okay, so my question to you, sir, is if we're having uh, this divide, um, I've heard suggestions such as we're having a regional breakaway or we're going for a confederation where every state is responsible for its own laws, its own security, and maintaining its own uh, wealth. What do you prefer? What do you think would work? I will start from the beginning. Or everything is starting. No, I will start from the beginning. You say you are sitting down with people. How do you sit down with people who have no power to enforce anything? The people you need to speak with. Let me tell you. One of the things we do the best in Nigeria is we talk a lot and do nothing. This is what this part of what we're doing now. We're just talking. This, what we're talking now is of no effect. Some people are sitting down somewhere now and drinking their tea or whatever and saying, I don't mind them. Let them keep talking. Let us stop wasting our time. You cannot dialogue with yourself. You cannot dialogue with someone who does not want any dialogue. You cannot talk to somebody who says you are a slave. And if you say you want to go, I will injure you. I will not let you go because I control the military. I control the, the, the police. That is the problem. So what you are doing now is just, you are just scratching it on the surface. There are fundamental issues to be addressed. I am not going to participate in a dialogue or conversation that I know will lead nowhere. These people have made up their minds. They are not stupid. They know what they are doing. They've planned it over time. And they've decided that you and I have no right to challenge it. And so, and unfortunately, you also have leaders in the southwest, in the southeast, in the south-south, in the north-central, and all across Nigeria, you have leaders who are chicken at it. I read a region of Nigeria over the weekend that they formed a security committee. And what is the agenda of the security committee? I thought they would say, oh, we are going to go after bandits, we are going to go after terrorists, we are going to go after invaders, we are going to go after... Do you understand? 
No, but it's obvious that they are forming their security probably to fight some people who are agitating for freedom within their zone. It doesn't make sense to me. You understand? You are not facing your oppressors. You are facing your own local people, your own citizens, who are demanding as a matter of legitimate right to say, look, we want freedom of association. We want to determine who we want to associate with. That is what I'm seeing. A governor came out and said he ordered the army to go and crush some of his own people. So how come the people of Sanfara, the people of Niger, where people are being kidnapped daily, they are not responding in that manner? What's your, what is wrong with us in the South? I'm not saying fight government. I am saying fight whosoever makes life difficult for you. I'm not saying go and fight government. But where you now have people who are now saying eh, we have formed our security thing and we're very loyal to the federal government of Nigeria. If the federal government of Nigeria provided security, will you be forming your own security in the first instance? So, <laughs> so for me, let me tell you, <laughs> it, it, it has become a big joke. But what I know is that a day will be a day when the monkey will go to the market and it will be a different story. That is, I have no doubt. History has taught me. Let me tell you, what shall it profit a leader if under his watch everything falls apart? I don't know what any leader will so that in the future they will say, yes, you champion the cause of your people. Is that all there is to life? A good leader should be a global statesman. When you mention Nelson Mandela, when you mention Moshuda Biola, when you mention Walimu Julius Nyerere, when you mention Tomo Kenyatta, when you mention Pandineu, when you mention all these great people, when you mention Mother Teresa, when you mention Prophet Muhammad, when you mention Jesus Christ, when you mention Buddha, all of them at different times in their history, they did something that the world is celebrating today. So why are our own leaders so myopic? Why are they so unambitious? Why are they so visionless that they cannot see the bigger picture? It is well. But you have yet to answer my question, sir. If we are to achieve this split of Nigeria, this division of Nigeria, would it be a regional uh, separation? Would it be individual states? If, let's just say, hypothetically, we are able to address uh, the federal government of Nigeria today, or United Nations, or African Union, and, and we are able to get attention to say, okay, we want to go, what would we put forward? A regional dimension, a uh, confederation, or what would you prefer as a solution, sir? Personally, I don't like to talk loosely or make wild generalizations. There are different options now available to Nigerians, and only Nigerians themselves can come together and determine, for example, when I interviewed Mazin and the Kanu last year, he spoke about a referendum that we should have, and I think that sounds very reasonable. Most countries that have gone through what we are going through right now went through that process and procedure. And I expect that Nigerians themselves will have to decide. There are those who don't even want to have anything to do with the union called Nigeria because they believe that it was forced together by the British in those days. Yes, that's and that's, the view. Many and, they are, and that they are tired of it. Uh, I've had meetings yes, with different groups. People consult me. People talk to us from time to time. Even the late Nika Dumakin, myself, Aki Oshutokun, and a few others. We meet 
with different governments who want our views. And my, my problem is the fact that it is almost impossible to separate under the present configuration without a war. That is my fear. And so that is why I am hoping that people would not throw the baby away with the bath water by saying what Kanu is saying is uh, crazy. Because Kanu is still talking about a process that is peaceful by talking of a referendum. You know, I mean, you were part of Brexit in London. I was one of those who said Brexit was impossible, that it will not happen. But before our very eyes, it happened. They pulled out. So let people vote for where they want to belong. That shouldn't be a problem. But where you now refuse and say they cannot go away, even, I mean, you, I'm sure you heard of a book. And it, it was a very popular title when we were going up, Let My People Go. I think it was by Albert Lutuli. Albert Lutuli. You know, during the apartheid regime and all that. He said, let my people go. You know, people should have the freedom to determine Especially in a marriage, if you don't like your wife, okay, you are tired of, of your wife, and it's obvious that you have no respect whatsoever for your wife, and then you say she cannot go away. I mean, what common sense do you see in that? You are saying you don't, you don't agree, you don't have anything in you common. You don't want her to go. You don't want her and you don't want her to go. You want her to remain your slave. You want her to still be cooking for you, which is what is happening now. How do you take money from the South South and you say you are bringing a train from Nigeria to Nigeria Republic? What sense is in that? How many people travel from Nigeria to Nigeria Republic? In fact, more people travel from Nigeria through Badagri, you have a federal road there that links up to the ECOWAS road from Semen through Kotonou, through Ilakoji. So you either go towards Lume in Togo or you go to Cote d'Ivoire when you turn right. We have not built anything in that direction. You have seaports in Lume. You have in Tema, in Ghana, you have in Kotonou, and you don't think it is better for you to invest money in that direction, but you will rather invest money towards Niger Republic. These are the things that are provoking people. Then the Niger data where the bulk of the money is coming from, you are not doing anything. The place is polluted, the place is destroyed. The people are living in mystery. You have not done anything for them, and you think yeah, you can just come grab. Now someone said they want to build the biggest gas plant in Meduguri. You are not building it where the gas is. So you are going to build the biggest gas plant in Africa, and you will now take it with pipes from <laughs> where to where, from the Niger Delta all the way. So these are issues that and we are appealing to those we know we are talking to them but it seems they are also powerless they are powerless so and i don't know what drives people to think that they can force others to follow them sheepishly so that's why i cannot tell you one thing that i want Nigerians are the ones who will determine what they want. And I have only one vote in the referendum. Only one vote. Left to me alone, I would have preferred a larger Nigeria. But the way it is going now, it's becoming more attractive. In fact, it's like Buari is helping the proponents okay, of, a, of the, many nations out of Nigeria. Let me put it that way. It's like the one even driving them and helping them you know, to solidify their action. There were people, oh, yes. I have a sister-in-law, very, very intelligent woman, very brilliant, she's a lawyer, a die-hard Buhari fanatic. If you speak to her today, 
you will not believe it's the same person. Two years ago, this woman, Buhari would not do anything wrong. So, but because of this intransigence on the part of the Buhari government, thinking that there is nothing anybody can do, we're in power. So a lot of people who ordinarily will not support those who want to break away. Suddenly, I'm hearing of Odua Nation, Yoruba Nation, Biafra, this and that, and you can't blame them. Okay, sir. Uh, just two final questions. I'd like to reflect one of my previous interviewees who has said that the government has been able to uh, get away with impunity because the Nigerian masters as a whole are not reacting to things they're supposed to react to. That they're not. And it's just a few individuals here and there who speak and then they are intimidated to keep quiet. Every of the people is the voice of God. That if Nigerians in mass were en masse, were awake and stood against this decision, um, that there would be a change. For example, this rail um, from, from Dalma to Niger Republic, a lot of uh, my interviewees are referring that it's a waste of resources. It has no economical value uh, in Nigeria. Um, it's, not, um, it's not even one of the routes to consider. Uh, so why is that? Why are billions being sunk into such a wasteful project? And then masters, uh, if we're, we're looking at the young people and, and uh a huge percentage of the population are not even reacting to this news. And that person is saying that this is because Nigerians as a whole choose to ignore situations and they keep tolerating and tolerating and the government continue to act with impunity. Do you think that this is the case? Because you said that um, these um, leaders are not listening. But do you think that because the volume is not loud enough? Definitely the volume is not loud enough. Don't forget that the lives of majority of Nigerian business people depend on government. The government of Nigeria, is why the president of Nigeria is so powerful, he can almost talk, turn a man into a woman and a woman into a man. You can wake up a certified pauper, and by afternoon you are a certificated billionaire. Just stroke of a pen from the president, your life can change within a twinkle of an eye. So that is the problem. So an average Nigerian depends on government. So everybody is afraid. If I, sometimes the way I describe it, there is only foolish people like myself who criticize government in Nigeria because what it means is that you are going to lose government patronage. And that's why it is painful sometimes when you see your fellow citizens who should appreciate that you are putting everything at a risk. Most people don't realize that the greatest radicals on earth are those who have something to lose and yet they put it at risk. A radical is not a poor man. They say a man who is down fears no fall. A radical is, a, is an Abiola who had everything to lose and chose to spend four years of his life in prison till he died. That, for me, is a radical. So a lot of people in Nigeria are not ready to make the... I see people today say, oh, if Abiola, if he didn't fight government, oh, he will be alive today. I say, so he will be alive, a useless man when he sees what is wrong in his country and is not able to speak then he dies of headache or stomach ache is that a worthy life and i tell them abiola died a good death abiola today will be remembered forever kudirat abiola will be remembered forever there is no country in the world that has made it where some people did not have to make sacrifice why is our own different? Why is everybody thinking it will happen by sitting down in the comfort of your homes or by going to church and praying like praying mantis? No. Nigerians must speak up. It does not cost you a dime to speak up. In fact, now you are even lucky. Unlike our time when we used to face the military on the street. Now you can sit in your home and reach millions of people. As we are talking now, people are watching us. I, I, I hooked up on Facebook as we are speaking now. We have 1.1k people, over 1,000 people, as I'm talking to you now. Watch it on Facebook. So people are watching. People will watch it on YouTube. They watch it all over the world. So just speak up. Let people know. If our important people, all the artists who control millions of followership, if they decide to, they don't even need to go to Lekiri Toll Gate. 
before people will fill their hyper. But you think only a few people should work. Should work as his business. Should work and sit in America, not come to Nigeria. But he chose to come home. And yet we still find people who are abusing what is wrong with them. I said, look, if you can't praise him, I'm not saying you should praise anybody, please tolerate everybody. Anybody who is doing something, no matter how little, let us appreciate them. But rather we are fighting amongst ourselves, oh, who is Shogure, who is Dilebo Modu, who is Mogadu, who is Veladro to it. That is not going to solve our problem. Our problems will be solved when we all realize that we have a big problem at hand, and trust me, it is not impossible to whip this government into line without firing a bullet. We will use our intelligence, we will use our brains. Nigerians are among the most brilliant human beings on earth. We are not going to allow anybody to reduce us to a country of cows. It's not going to happen. Look at how many Nigerians we have in the cabinet of Joe Biden today, and then we are still talking about cows. Look at what happened in Ghana today. I just read on Twitter that Twitter now is having its headquarters, its African headquarters in Ghana. In Ghana. A population of maybe less than 30 million. But because Ghana has built a good image for itself. Anytime you yes. read anything about Nigeria now, it's about cows, it's about banditry, it's about kidnapping, it's about... So who wants to bring a business to... So, correct. And you are now talking to me uh, that uh, unity. It's not about the problem. Is not unity. I don't have any problem with you. Some of my best friends are there. I have a friend in who, who is from northeast. You, you understand? How wow, Tuko. His father used to be a PDP chairman. And I had the Bamanga Tuko's son. When I was contesting, I wanted him to be my running mate. Now we have Nasi Wehru fight in Kaduna brilliant very cerebral but i don't know what happened in politics every day now in kaduna is about banditry how do you run a nation where you don't even know what is going to happen between tonight and tomorrow morning and we're advising government and government says no and once you advise government then you are an enemy of government i'm not an enemy of anybody i don't want this to go on forever but unfortunately it seems these people have made up their minds that everything must fall apart. Unfortunately, the great writer Chino Achebe is no more. In many words, sir, in many words, you have explained our position. You and I, the average Nigerian, are not the problem. We have a problem and we have to resolve it peacefully if we can. And ultimately, what we hope to achieve is. Um, a peaceful resolution and how we would have this referendum uh, national conference and how we'll have representation from um, all the enemy groups and we will all decide peacefully what we want. That is ultimately what we are calling for on the long term, a national conference. So uh, our conference on Sunday is a mini national conference where we have representations from every state in Nigeria, including Abuja, and then everyone can have their say. That's ultimately what we're hoping to achieve on the long term, that we can have a peaceful resolution to these problems. Because I am sure, sir, you and I, we have witnessed war, the outbeats over the news in some countries. We would like to avoid such a situation in our country. That's the aim, sir. Um, one final question, uh, or should I say perhaps a remark? Uh, one of my previous interviewees from Jigawa State, he referenced uh, something that you said, that Nigerians on average are selfish, which is the problem. And everyone would only think about their own personal gain first, about the interest of the nation. And uh, another interviewee from Borneo State said, all these people agitating for, for splits and divisions is because they're not benefiting from the government. That once the government chose them a few crumbs here and there, they would be silent. Do you think this is the case? No. Well, I would again speak for myself. People have accused me in the past that it's because I wanted something from Buari, they didn't give me that's that's so cheap. That blackmail is so cheap. If I wanted to have anything in government, I have enough contact, I have enough clout. I'll get whatever I want. Even if I want to be in government outside Nigeria, 
I have enough contact and enough friends who can give me. That's that's. If you look behind me, I'm a scholar. I came to Lagos out of joblessness to look for a job. I would have been a university teacher. That's my first law. As I'm speaking to you now, my biggest project, my dream now, I'm doing my library in Ibadan, a library resort. All I want to do is be able to produce books. I have, nobody reads again. We must get serious. I don't need anything from government. That's why I can criticize government. Why did I follow Buhari who claimed to be a, prop, a pauper in 2014-2015, where at the time PDP was spraying money everywhere? I followed the man who said he didn't have money. It's based on principle. And when I saw that he was misbehaving, I also left on principle. There was no fight between me and Buari. I just realized that, hey, the direction this man is going, if I follow him, all of us will end up in the same gutter. So I decided to face my business and leave him alone. If he fails, good luck to him. If he passes, good luck to him. But I have no doubt in my mind that the way he is going, and you can see even his own wife complains. So if people attack us, that is because I want something. If your own wife in the same house is saying, hey, bad people have taken over power, and nobody's listening to the woman. Even last week, I'm sure she still echoed it, saying bad people have taken over power in Nigeria. I don't know who they are. She probably knows them. But it tells you that the president should look inwards. We have the brains. So if Joe Biden is picking Nigerians to come and work for him in America, how come that the same Nigerians cannot function in their own country? And all you do is to blackmail us is because they want something. What do I want from government? What I'm wearing now? If I wear another cloth on top of it, they would think I'm a mild person. I'm not going to sleep on two beds tonight, only one. Do you understand? So for me, I have chosen that I want to live my life in peace. Those who think at 80, they must be running a yo-yo around Abuja. That's their business. I see so many people, I wonder, you have been governor. If I was talking to some friends yesterday who had lunch, and I said, there was a governor who decamped recently from one party to another. I'm like, what else does he want? Why is he decamping? So, at, and you are nearer 70 now. So, why don't you find time to go back to your family, live with your children, your grandchildren, travel around the world. You've made money, you've made everything. I don't understand these people. People ask me, oh, are you not going to contest again? No, I said, I'm not going to become a serial contestant. I just contest it for the fun of it when I know the result already. So I am telling you uh, this idea that if they give crumbs to some people, yes, it is true, if they give crumbs to some people, they will jump at it, but I'm not one of those people. Because he haven't lived 60 years of my life and I've survived thus far. I don't need anybody's crumbs. Thank you so much, Chief Dr. Nene Mohamedou, for joining us. Thank you for your insight. And uh, we do hope that you will at least um, watch the Unity Conference on Sunday. In, in, Is it virtual? Streaming on, on Facebook. On, uh, we'll be on Zoom, we'll be on Instagram, and we have, as I said, representation from all the 36 states and the MCT, and everyone explaining their own point of view as to the Nigerian problem and how we're going to solve it. And I'd just like to, to make a short comment here. You said you look forward to your library, but uh, some of us are reading it. Um, you know, I came back to Nigeria as an adult, also, we hope to make a change. However, um, Conviction upon me is to force the peace, as it were, breach peace in our country so that we can stay here and we don't have to be refugees, so that we don't all have to carry our bags and run back to England. That's the hope of what we're trying to achieve. And yeah. I hope that is communicated clearly. And just for the record, for those who are watching, the Unity Project Nigeria is independent. We're not a political group. We have no affiliations with any government. We are just Nigerians who want peace, who want what is best for every and average Nigerian. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, Chief Dr. Nili Thank you, Jennifer. I, I was going to ask about your mother when we started. You know, because a lot of people may not know your pedigree. 
your mom was one of those who inspired us as young writers in those days when she had a column in uh, in vanguard and uh, so i was going to ask how is she doing and all that uh my mother like a lot of people have uh, resigned on nigeria uh, hmm. my mother does not visit nigeria if she comes on holiday she prefers to go to gambia or jamaica and i recall um i think it was about 10 years ago she said she was going to buy a home in jamaica instead of buying a home in nigeria so she has uh, abandoned nigeria same as my father those people do not interact or relate with nigeria whatsoever so I'd also like to point across that I'm not in Nigeria because I'm looking for crumbs. I'm here because I want to make a change. And I can very easily shake off my passport and run off. But we want peace. We want a place our children can come to. And we believe that if we don't act, posterity will ask us. Today you referenced Nelson Mandela. Uh, you referenced great leaders, people who stuck their neck out uh, for the benefit of of the of the masses for the greater good of their nation and that, that's what we're hoping to achieve awaken the national conscience awaken the average nigerian speak up stand for your rights otherwise you will continually be trampled upon and if you cannot even speak up for your rights support those people who are speaking up for your rights nigerians on average are not supportive of anyone who's trying to make a change and I'd like to reference Shomore uh, Two-Face uh, when he was uh, arrested, you know. A lot of Nigerians came out on social media and they cast him out. We never want to support anybody. So how are we going to make a change? Well, it's a, it's a, I, I hope you and I will have another opportunity. If we want this separation, we all must come out. For example, I interviewed uh, Otuma Gani Adams and he talks about the Yoruba nation. And when you speak to 10 Yoruba people, 8 out of them says, who is an idiot? He's an idiot. Okay, but you are not happy with what the government is doing. Gary Adams is sticking out his neck saying you're going to do something and you're not ready to support him. Same thing in the East, all over the country. I'm saying that Nigerians should know what they want. Nigerians should come out and speak for what they want. They should stand with what they want. That's the only way they're going to have a change, rather than grumbling quietly. That's the whole answer. I agree with you. Uh, I have the same frustration. Some people will say, those who still believe in Nigeria will say, oh, the, the next president of Nigeria must come from Southwest. Must come. Then when you mention A, they will say it's a thief. You mention B, B they say it's a rogue. You mention uh, C, they, so who do you then want? You must agree on someone. And the earlier you do, the better. Because exactly. a presidential election is not an overnight thing you can win. So, it's frustrating. Trust me. Even those who say, we want Nigeria to break up. Okay, what are the things you want to see in that new country? How do you arrive at that How new country? We, we, we can't agree. So, I don't know. That's why the enemies are laughing. Because the enemies know that a lot of us are not serious. The enemies know that a lot of us don't have the balls to even fight for our beliefs, which is very unfortunate. But